So pretty common requirement for some people is they will have a document, a Word document, uh, that they got a hold of, and they need to take the content of that Word document and get it published onto the web. Uh, what most content authors will do at that point is they'll simply copy the content, and they'll go to paste it in. Not a bad assumption. Power Paste is going to do a couple things for us that's, that's unique. Uh, so the first one, and I've turned this on where it prompts me for my choices. Uh, I could pre-configure it to do one or the other. Uh, one of the first things it's going to ask me is do I want to keep or remove the formatting? If you've ever seen the HTML that Microsoft Word creates when you copy a Word document, uh, it has lots of inline styles. It has lots of non-standard XHTML attributes that are specific to Microsoft Word, etc. We're going to remove all those non-standard attributes regardless. But part of, part of what makes it hard to copy-paste Word content onto the web uh, in large sites and keep it consistent is if I choose to bring over all those inline styles because then I can bring over font choices, color choices, and if every person contributing content to your blog site or to your social platform can choose their own inline styles, you're going to get a rather inconsistent look across your content. So by removing the formatting, which is the option I'm going to take, we're going to tell PowerPaste, keep the semantic structure of the document. I want to know headings, tables, lists, paragraphs, but don't bring over all those inline styles. The second thing that PowerPaste is going to do that's unique uh, is it's going to give me the option to bring over the images from that Word document. So triggering that second piece is going to make that happen. So basically, now when I get this document here, and, and this will be the only other time that I show uh, HTML code, is a couple of things happened here. Number one, if I look at the source code of this content um, and ignore the image for a moment, I will come back to why you are seeing that in a moment and what you can do to fix it. Um, but what you're getting out of that Word document, nice, clean, simple HTML. Headings are headings, paragraphs are paragraphs, lists are lists, tables are tables. And for those of you who've ever seen the underlying HTML that Word gives you, all of that extraneous markup is not there. And all of the inline styles are not there. So the, the beauty of this is if I have people pasting content into my blog, into my wiki, into my social platform, into my CMS, I have the semantic structure of that document. My headings, my paragraphs, my tables, my lists are all there. But I haven't brought over all those styles. So I can let the CSS of the CMS or the social platform determine what headings and paragraphs and tables and lists look like. So it's, it's a very easy way to bring the content over, but maintain some sanity with how the content looks uh, across pieces of content. So that's one half of power paste. The other half was these images. And I, and I want to discuss kind of the, there's two parts to this. So one part is the power paste algorithm itself actually grabbed the images that were part of the Word document and brought them over. That's something that the standard paste product in the community version of Tiny won't do. So that in and of itself is a difference. Uh, the second part is what you choose to do with that image. So by default, what we get from that pasting process, and, and this has to do with how JavaScript can and cannot interact with my machine and my hard drive and the clipboard, what I'm going to get by default is a base64 encoded binary of the image directly in the HTML. Uh, if you've ever dealt with base64 encoded images, that little tiny MCE logo at the top turned into all of that binary. So most sane people at this point look at that and say, oh my gosh, I don't want that in my content. What do I do? So what you can do is in your tiny MCE init, you can configure tiny MCE that when it finds one of these binary encoded images, it will automatically ship it off to whatever URL you give it. So some, some URL on your site, on your server. And then you can process this image, store it somewhere on your system, and send back a URL of where it lives now. So if you have a CDN or you have a, a caching server that holds all your static resources like images, you can take that binary, you can store it somewhere and send us back the new URL. And we will, instead of having that big giant binary image, we will then replace it with the source attribute of the image. Uh, so the, the typical use case for large systems or for, for public-facing systems is to always replace these Base64 images uh, with something else. If you go onto our docs and you look for or search for the phrase uh, asynchronous images or asynchronous image upload, either one, 
uh, you will find a page in our DACO that covers all of the APIs required to make this happen. Uh, it, is, it is not terribly complicated to set up, uh, it, and we have a couple of examples, so we can, we can help you through uh, getting this working if that's a problem for you as you implement uh, PowerPaste.